this uh, tutorial I'm gonna give you a, a quick uh, tutorial on uh, the radiation boundary uh, using the eddy current. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use a dipole antenna and this is basically getting from the um, one of the ANSYS Maxwell um, tutorial notes that I actually had before and happened to have and uh, I found it very useful and I thought maybe I can actually show it to you as well. Um, this is about um, uh, basically the, the frequency the, the frequency uh, dependent calculation nature of the Maxwell. Uh, before I go through the model I wanted to um, point it out a couple of um, small points uh, that is related to this uh, design. Number one is Maxwell is a low frequency simulator. So for antenna designs and generally for high frequency um, antenna designs you are not going to use Maxwell. What you are going to use is HFSS, a high frequency structural simulator. Uh, this software is also from an ANSYS family and uh, you can basically copy and paste the entire design that you have in um, any platforms in the, within the family and you don't need to redraw any uh, models. So I suggest you to go to, uh, to HFSS if you have any high frequency simulations. Uh, one other thing that I was going to mention is also uh, well, yes, that's true. Maxwell is for low frequency, but how do you define low frequency? Um, if you are familiar with the lambda, uh, the wavelength of um, of any electromagnetic wave, um, what it basically Maxwell is good at is for near field calculations, and um, also because Maxwell is not taking care of the impedances and uh, you know um, impedance matching, uh, therefore. Uh, it basically assumed that you are using all your uh, designs within the Maxwell. Uh, basically, all of those designs are uh, greater than the lambda over. Uh, it's, it's smaller than the lambda uh, lambda of the frequency, meaning that uh, that uh, the circuit is discrete and you don't need to care about the impedance matching. For these kind of circuits, roughly lambda divided by ten is pretty good. Um, uh, you know, appro approximation. So, for example, if you're working at 1 megahertz or 1 gigahertz, the lambda is 30 centimeter. And that means that your circuit should not be larger than 3 centimeter. Uh, or else you are not using Maxwell, you have to go and use HFSS. And the last point is about the boundary condition that I'm going to use in this design. The boundary condition that I'm going to use in this design is the radiation boundary. And what it does is basically it will let the radiation to just pass through the boundary as if the boundary does not exist. This is particularly good because when you're going to measure how much radiation power, for example, your antenna or RFID um, tag has, um, as I said, the antenna or RFID tag that are working in the low frequencies are totally fine. You can use them and as I said, um, these radiation boundaries are pretty good. But you have to know that the use of the radiation boundary is uh, conjugated to the use of um, displacement current. That means that when you have a boundary, you have to say that inside the boundary, I want to have the calculation for the displacement current. And this displacement current has been unchecked in the previous tutorial in 301. And so I want to tell you that in this tutorial, you should have put it checked in order to use the radiation boundary. Okay, now let's just start with the same format of the tutorial and in this uh, case I'm going to show you how to um, design uh, the very simple model that we need to uh, measure the radiation boundary. Okay, I'm going to use, uh, I want to first make sure that everything is in a, a scale that is good for 1 megahertz. That means that the circuit cannot be as very large, so not larger than 3 centimeters or so, and therefore um, you know, we're working in a centimeter range and our frequency is one megahertz, uh, sorry, one gigahertz. Um, so one thing that you want to do is you want to perhaps go and change the unit of your uh, simpler simulator at first. And that uh, can be done from a modeler view. And then under that, you have the units. And then you just click on that. And I chose centimeter. You can choose meter or whatever unit that you are um, comfortable to work with. Okay, press OK on that. Now I'm going to go and select uh, copper for my uh, material. So that's copper. So everything will be copper. And then I'm going to use uh, a tool called uh, Tortoise, Taurus. 
and I'm going to use torus and I'm going to punch in some numbers. So I'm going to use the 000 uh, for the center of the torus and uh, then I'm going to basically say okay for the x value I'm going to put my 0 0.0095 actually sorry and that would be I'm trying to use the centimeter scale so that would be 0 0.95 that's 95 9.5 millimeters basically um, and then I'm going to print in uh, select enter and then you need to define uh, the outer radius of the torus and that's going to be basically 0.1 for the dx so and the rest is zero there we go so do we need to change the name we can actually call it um, the antenna or the ring antenna and we can put a color for that let's say copper looking call and that's it okay um, maybe I want to make the 85 85% a bit uh, lower so we can basically see what we have okay great uh, now what I'm going to do is I want to create some ex uh, excitation for that uh, I'm going to do the excitation and uh, basically uh, do the boundaries um, because it's kind of related to the design and uh, it's going to be a long uh, tutorial anyway so I'll just bear with me and uh, let's continue on the excitation now so for the excitation what I need to do is just uh, a surface that well, let's say uh, in the modeler I will go and say oh I have to select the, the, the ring first and then I will go to the surface edit and then surface and then section and probably YZ there you go I have the two surface right here and uh, you are familiar with this uh, separate bodies get rid of one of them and go ahead with uh, the section that we have and um, here I'm gonna put um, an excitation and it would be current excitation okay and this current excitation I can put um, so whatever value that you are putting here remember in the eddy current solution the value of the current is the peak value yes so let's first uh, times it by so basically what I'm gonna put here is the RMS value of 1 which equivalents to the peak value of 1.4 uh, sorry yes the peak value should be uh, times radical uh, square root of 2 and then when you divide it by square root of 2 you will get 1 okay so this would be 1 times a square root of 2 which is 1.414 uh, and uh, you can actually go and say this is going to be solid it's fine and you can press OK on that okay and now uh, what we can do is we can actually create a region here I'm gonna select a vacuum for the uh, the region that I'm going to solve this and I'm gonna use this sphere here and uh, say okay let's make this sphere big enough uh, that it can uh, you know cover all the uh, areas and it uh, should be uh, larger than a uh, it should be larger than at least a quarter of the lambda so if you're using uh, so in this case the lambda is um, 30 centimeter and the quarter of that is 7.5 right so um, I have to go with um, 8 for example sorry 8 centimeter for the DX let's say and that would be because the for one gigahertz the quarter of that is five is 30 so the quarter of that is six so I can go with like seven or eight and uh, which is larger than the quarter of the lambda that I'm using okay good so for the dy and dz we put zero and press ok okay that's pretty big sphere uh, let's call this one the region and um, everything else is fine uh, control D to basically see what you have right there and and that's that's actually good so far it's all fine so now let's go and assign the functions to the to the uh, to the radius of the region okay so let's say that you are going to change the frequency a Every time and you want to see that for example for different frequency how much um, you know like the pointing power pointing vector uh, you have pointing with POY meaning how much power you're sending or receiving um, to do that what you can do is you can actually define um, this region um, 
the radius of this region, in fact, by, uh, you know, uh, by frequency. So as I said, let's call it lambda. And let's make sure that it's bigger than lambda, one quarter of the lambda. So I say lambda divided by four plus, um, so let's say, you know, one centimeter. And in this case, or like two centimeter. And then it will ask you what, what is lambda. So, well, lambda is in the term of length. And we can actually say the lambda is also is a function of the frequency. And to do that, we say, okay, lambda, um, if we look at lambda in meter, it would be C0, which is a constant uh, term for the speed of light, uh, understandable by answers, divided by the frequency. Let's call it frequency or freak. And uh, well, that, that's basically the lambda that we have. And then you can press OK. And it will ask you what is the frequency. Well, frequency is in term of frequency. So the unit is frequency. And you can say in the gigahertz, my frequency is 1. So let's see. Uh, we put lambda divided by 4 times plus 4 two centimeters and the frequency is one and one related to one gigahertz is a lambda of 30 and therefore 30 divided by four is um, how much is that um, 7.5 and plus two we should get 9.5 I think so let's see if it's true yeah 9.5 awesome so it does work and now if you change the frequency you will you will see a radiation um, boundary that is always keep getting larger or smaller depending on the frequency. That's good. OK, and uh, what else do you want to do? Uh, so we, we need to assign a boundary now, which is now is the good time to do that. You right click on the boundary, and you just go and say, I want to make sure that this guy is, oh, my bad. So let's go to the Maxwell 3D and solution type and make sure that you are selecting the eddy current as your solution type. OK, press OK. Now when you come back, you can actually have a boundary and in the boundary here, you can have radiation. As I said, the radiation is only for the uh, non-DC simulator. And you need to have the, this displacement current uh, calculated in order to be able to have the radiation uh, boundary. There we go. If you don't have this radiation uh, boundary, by the way, nothing bad will happen inside your uh, design. I mean, if you're doing whatever uh, circuit design inside and you're doing it whatever simulations inside for your model that's fine because it's far away and what it does is the Maxwell will basically always um, try to either by default make it uh, tangential to the fields uh, when it comes to the boundaries or you make it zero or um, or zero tangential uh, these are the default that Maxwell will do I think Maxwell uh, in the in, in the magnetostatic it was always default was tangential um, so when, if, if you think about this uh, coil that we have right there, like the ring uh, antenna that we have, uh, nothing can actually affect the, the uh, calculation inside if you don't put the radiation boundary. But when you put the radiation boundary, all the, um, all the power can actually go outside that and think of an unlimited space, um, which is pretty good because then we can actually uh, know how much power it's sending. Okay. So, and that is also selected and I want to just make sure that when I change the simulator nothing bad happened to my current everything is fine and uh, one last thing is you want to go to the modeler uh, to the Maxwell 3D and then under the excitation you want to select set eddy current effect and make sure that the displacement current is uh, checked for the region you need to also calculate the displacement current so that's very important to check this one as well because otherwise you cannot uh, calculate the pointing uh, uh, pointing vector for for the surface of the radiation boundary to basically find how much power is uh, sending and uh, anyway you do need that in order to to have uh, a right calculation okay so and you can press okay on that and, and the last part that you want to do is just to apply some mesh uh, you can uh, basically um, select the, the ring that you have uh, from here and you can right click on that and say I want to have some uh, mesh and it's going to be uh, basically surface approximation mesh and um, in that case you want to make sure that the set maximum normal deviation angle is 15 degrees and also you want to make sure that the maximum um, aspect ratio is going to be 10 okay so these are good for having a nice initial meshing at the beginning so let's just put this initial conditions for the mesh and uh, that's basically it and one last thing that you want to do is also we want to create um, an outer surface from the uh, the region that we have, and with that we can actually um, 
assign a matrix, matrix, and then with that matrix we can actually measure some um, resistance. Uh, I will tell you later how you are going to measure that. So what you do is just select the, the boundary the faces and you go to the modeler and uh, under the surface surface you basically say create object from the face. I have to select the face so I'm pressing F and doing the same thing again. I wonder if I can do that from here. There we go. I can do the same thing instead of modeler I just right click and uh, now you have this region uh, as a outside face and I can call it like um, basically outside so that's a face that we can use it later on for the calculator and we can say refer to this face each time that you want it okay uh, that's nice and uh, lastly we want to do um, a matrix assign a matrix to that and it will calculate the current for that and um, that's basically the last thing that you want to do. Okay, so this uh, this is done, and <coughs> last but not least, assigning uh, simulations. Uh, as I said, the frequency here is uh, I'm going to give you some uh, good resolution for the percent average of 0.2, and uh, for the solver, the frequency here can be whatever that you want. We can actually call it frequency, um, the one that you already defined in hertz, and uh, that would be okay in that case that's fine um, make sure that the frequency that you are uh, putting here is the same as the frequency uh, variable that you defined already so in that case when you change this frequency it will also change the radius of the, the shape that's that's all I guess uh, apparently you cannot define a variable here in the adaptive frequency so let's just put it 1 gigahertz okay I have to put 1 uh, and then do it again because it was off. Okay, one gigahertz, and that's okay. And done. Now, after saving the design, um, we just need to do one more step, and that is um, validating the model. Everything is all fine, and I don't have any messages in the message center. Everything is good. So I will run the simulation and come back to you when the simulation is done.